Now, Governor of Abia State, uh, Okeze Kwazu in Nigeria's uh, East, uh, has granted assent to the bill which guarantees the right of females to inherit and own property in their father's family in the state. The State Assembly some weeks ago passed the bill to bring Abia State in conformity with international best practices of eliminating all forms of discrimination against women. While appending his signature on the law, Ikuyazu made it clear that his administration shall lean on the side of reason and common sense in discharging its obligations to residents. Governor Ikuyazu described the bill as historic, positively disruptive, and capable of setting society on the path of equal opportunities and sustainable development. He adds that the Female Inheritance Bill was the most important legislation passed by the State House of Assembly. Monday, Onyekachi Ubani, a lawyer and rights activist, joins me now. Good to see you, Monday, and thanks for your time. Now, take us through this uh, landmark uh, well, uh, appendage, uh, uh, which uh, brings uh, uh, the state uh, to the international limelight. What's the new law about? Uh, thank you for having me. I, I'm very happy uh, uh, this night to comment about the new law that has just been passed. Uh, for your information, I'm from Abia State, and I feel very proud uh, when I learned that the governor of the state has uh, actually appended his signature uh, to that piece of legislation that was recently passed by the State House of Assembly. Uh, if you recall that the Supreme Court of Nigeria, either two or three years ago, has actually ruled uh, that women are, uh, within the, uh, the Yoruba cultural setting uh, have a right to family inheritance. And then there was a case also that came from Anambra State where a woman fought the case up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court held that women within that particular environment is entitled uh, to family inheritance, uh, which is clearly at variance with the, with the norms and culture of the Bush, that women are not supposed to be entitled to any family inheritance, uh, more so when they are supposed to be married out. And so this new law that has just been passed uh, by Abia State House of Assembly and appended to by the, uh, by the governor, is clearly historic, uh, very commendable, and as the governor himself uh, announced, uh, it is clearly in consonance with best international practices. Uh, we need to uh, ensure that women are not discriminated against. We need to ensure that women share the same level of equality with the men. That is a clear standard of gauging whether a country is making some level of progress when those people you call vulnerable women and children have been taken care of and by this piece of legislation uh, i i take time uh, to commend the abia state uh, house uh, members and the governor who has actually appended his signature on that piece of legislation let, let, let me jump in here uh monday you know tell us with your vast experience as a lawyer and rights activist uh, paint us a picture of how the fight for equality has impacted the lives of women uh, uh you know especially in eliminating all forms of uh, discrimination against them? It, it has not been very easy uh, uh, for the women here in this part of the world. Uh, women are regarded as second class citizens. Uh, it didn't start today, even from our cultural setting. Uh, women are not supposed to be given education, but that has been over, we have over, overcome that aspect. Uh, now you have more women in some of the universities. I remember when I was in university, men were more in number. Uh, years after I left university, I learned that even the hostel that were predominantly men for men, predominantly men for men, are now taken over by women in University of Nigeria and Soka, where I graduated from. So also all other universities and all that. So in that angle, we have overcome. The other cultural practices of discriminatory practices that is going on, especially for the widows and all that, some of the state house of assembly have enacted law that actually outlawed some of those uh, practices that are very, very uh, repugnant to equity and natural justice. Uh, it's not been easy. Of course, you remember that the Beijing conference where women were giving special recognition and all the nations of the world were asked to go back to their uh, various countries and begin to implement policies that give women 
some level of equal opportunity. Uh, we are here to make it probably at the, the political arena where the women, percentage of women that are in the house or at the executive level are still very few. But with streamlined effort, with serious advocacy, with legislations like this that actually remove discrimination against women, we may begin to see more women enter into politics. We may also begin to see that women will not be discriminated against either in the office setting or in the economic pursuit or in the social or an educational pursuit. In every aspect, we must try as much as possible to really join the world by showing that we are developing, that we have actually evolved as a nation that respects all these rights by allowing women to share you know, the same level of equality. Uh, uh, and quickly, uh, let's see if we can close on this. Speaking of which, uh, talking about respect of rights, how optimistic are you that this law will be implemented? Uh, that's the, the issue of uh, respect. I didn't, I didn't hear the question. How optimistic? I'm talking about the opti optimism you share in this. How confident are you that the law will be implemented? There is no two way about it, uh, especially if the provision of the law has some penal consequences. Uh, I have this absolute faith. Uh, immediately after the Supreme Court made that pronouncement in the case that it you know, came from Anambra, there is no more so much dic discrimination in terms of family inheritance. And all the states in the eastern region have actually started to implement it. Uh, most educated families in the eastern region have also recognized the fact that women can share in family inheritance. So I believe that a little bit of advocacy, a little bit of uh, knowledge sharing, and then uh, ensuring that we use television and radio in local languages to explain the importance of this law, we go a long way in ensuring implementation. And, and then those who disobey must be penalized. That's the only way we can ensure our compliance. Monday, Onyekachi Uvani, many thanks for your time.